Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it, check. Check it, check, check, to check. Yeah. It's a super sweet Saturday. Black Friday's great. Cyber Monday's great. But what about just a super duper sweet Saturday? That's what we're doing. And we're getting it in. first guitar workout of the day. I'm so glad you're here. It's going to be kind of groovy. It's going to be kind of fun. Don't be scared by the charts. In fact, let's just let's just start by saying hello. Guitar friend Tim here. Hello, guitar friend. Welcome to the YouTubes, whether you're watching us live or sometime in the future. It's, it's today somewhere, everywhere. If you saw my recent triads video, the triathlon, that's kind of the theme of what we're doing today. Just taking simple shapes and moving them all over the neck. And triads, sometimes they, they sort of get into our head because they start stacking up and they seem like they're everywhere. There's so many of them. But I'm here to tell you there's not that many of them. And I'm here to tell you that Several of them you already have underneath your fingers. We just got to see the potential that's sitting inside of a bar chord, for example. So without further ado, let's sort of just warm up, loosen up. We're in G. We're just hovering in the happy space of G major. I hope you got your guitar and I hope you're willing to just sort of, you know, just play whatever. It's just, it's just a little bit more interesting than practicing alone. And I'll throw some things at you like we're in a workout class. This is like an open gym. So anyone that's a member might be here. Anyone that's not, just jump in. We'll do some stuff. You can just play any old G chord right now, whichever one you like. The open G sounds great. The G bar chord right there on the third fret. That's groovy. The G bar chord that's up here starting on the fifth string. And then this one's kind of nice to hit those harmonics, right? Sometimes it's fun just to like enjoy what the guitar can do. Piano players can't do that. Jealous. So right there, I'm just holding a little shape that's like, I'm just holding down two notes here. Then I'm hitting that open G string down that G right there so we get this nice sort of droning thing. Here's something that's kind of fun, sort of a party trick. Just keep playing that G, that open G string. Get your right hand picking kind of relaxed. I'm doing all down strokes now. You could do down, up, down, up, down, up. But sometimes it's good just to do something real just kind of physical and just sort of settle into the tactile guitar playing side of your brain. So that 12th fret, we know that's a G on the G string, right? So I'm doing this sort of like triple let, triple let. So I sort of hit the note, pull off, it rings it, and then I hit it again. And using that trick on on an open string that matches the key that you're in, you can get some really nice. Okay. 
Okay, so we go back to playing some G chords here. We'll do like whatever triads you know for G. Oh yeah, we got Mr. Maynard in the chat. I don't know how long the latency is, the delay, but I just saw your comment pop up. Yeah, let me, let me scoot this so I can see the chat roll in. Drones down. Who else we got there? Wade, Wade Olson from Texas. Good to see you, Wade. It's great because I've seen, you know, so many of the members have seen your names on the sort of back end side of the email list and everything. Hey, Anne. I know Anne's a regular sort of seeing the content out here in the YouTubes. Glad to have you here. I love this guitar so much. I'm, uh, I was sort of originally and still am kind of in my heart, sort of a strat, strat man. But the day that I decided to like seek out a non-strat guitar, I, I tried all the guitars in this shop in Santa Monica, California, back when I lived uh, out there. True Tone Guitar, this great guitar shop where I would go in like every Sunday, probably like six Sundays in a row and played all the guitars on the wall, like the tellies. And I just sort of kept gravitating towards these Gretches. And this one in particular just really stuck out. And so they were kind of annoyed by me, but I eventually made the purchase, so it made it worth their while. And like I was saying, um, this guitar just got set up, like a really nice setup. So it, it just sort of, it's like having a new guitar. Any of you guitar players out there who, if you've been neglecting getting your guitar set up by a professional, sometimes it's just sort of great to like, even if you know how to do it, have someone who's really good at it, do it. It's like having someone make a sandwich for you. It just tastes better than when you do it. So yeah, loving this guitar and all the sounds it can get. So just settling in, if you, if you got your guitar in your hands, that's great. Play some Gs and play whichever Gs you can find here. So this bar chord shape right here gives us three triads. So triads aren't always necessarily just three three strings that come out of a bar chord, but in this case, the, that root three, five, that root third and a fifth, we get that combination there, there, and there. So the high three strings, the next three strings down, and then the next three strings down. Right there, three triads for G major. And obviously, the beauty of guitar is that if someone says, okay, we're suddenly in a different key, you can take that same pattern, that same shape, and know that you have three triads for that major shape. That's why that chart there, major, we're showing it all in G, but you can slide it around as long as you get that white note to line up with wherever your root is. So if it was an F or a C or a B flat or whatever, just make sure you slide that whole framework so that it matches your, your given chord. So we have this G, it's like, oh, suddenly we're gonna move the song to B. It's like, okay. And, you know, of course you want to try to know it from all different angles, but as a guitar player, especially on the fly, it helps to be able to just go, all right, I can take that shape and that set of shapes to a new locale and then have everything relative off of that. There is no shame or harm in that whatsoever. Obviously we want to build in the other information, but if there's anyone out there kind of making it seem like, oh, you can't do that, that's cheating. It's like, well, then maybe they haven't played enough gigs to realize that sometimes you just need an answer when the drummer counts you in. So right here, this G, here's our neck shape up here, up the neck. This is the one that, it looks like a handful and it kind of is, but you know it from the C shape down here. And if we were to just keep going up the neck, that's the shape that we're sliding. So it's very useful. And you kind of probably most quickly will recognize that top three string little triangle there as like coming from the D. That's why the C shape and D shape, they kind of are synonymous to me because I feel like the moment you take the C shape out for a, a stroll, as it were, it turns into this shape, which has that sort of distinctive D that we know from the open shape. So for G, in this case, again, we're just sliding shapes, we're up here. And that gives us triad on the first three strings, triad on the second three strings. And for the sake of this triad talon and in the charts, I just focus on the top four strings because you can get so much mileage out of those two groups and it sort of, um, scales it down a bit so you're not trying to look at all the different possibilities which can get us a little bit in our heads this last sort of cluster up here is based off of that shape that sort of bar chord shape 
uh, starting on the fifth string. So we get the first three strings right there. DJ! Daniel, one of the, I think you were the very first to jump over to sign up for our new Mighty Networks, um, this amazing new platform. I really am excited about it. Um, and if it seems like I'm talking about the membership uh, along the way, it's just because I'm excited because we just upgraded to this thing that's going to combine the courses and the communication, all the community stuff like the polls and, the, and all that fun stuff in one spot. And there's an app for it. I did a lot of scouring to find what what platform could do community and courses and all that in one spot. And I'm pretty excited. I think that Mighty's the one that's going to suit us really well. But um, that's from the Guitar for and Tim membership and all that. And of course, we're running a great deal these days, Black Friday. But let's get into the meat of this here triathlon workout. Um, and at the end, we'll do some q and I'll answer some whatever questions you have. Um, but essentially with this, if you got your guitar, the, the theme that I was going <clears throat> digging into in the, in the long form YouTube video was just, uh, that if you get these uh, like triads going in a couple different directions, then you sort of like get them into your system in a way that's going to stick because right here we might get, you know, familiar with a few shapes that are in one area. But then the moment we want to go further up the neck, sometimes it can seem like we're jumping to another island and, and it's not quite all there. So it's good to spend a little bit of time in one area. The first event would be stacked. So if we put on this loop again, it would be just kind of staying in this one area here where we we're just covering that G, right? Top three strings and then strings two, three, and four. So the strings, if you don't know, they count one this uh, thin string, the highest string in terms of the register, in terms of the pitch. So this is one down to the sixth string, the low, the low E string. So if I say strings one, two, three, that's those top three strings there. And then strings two, three, and four. And those are the only four strings we're gonna like focus on for these triads today. So if we switch now to the chord progression that goes between G, C, and D, we'll go there now. And then we'll go real slow here. Then the C, back to the G, then down to the D. And that looks just like the, the open D right there, right? So I call that stacked because this is about wanting to move the triads in the middle of a chord and not feeling like you have to just sort of cling to the handrails and stay in one spot. It's all about trying to free you up. So if I wanted to play like two triads per chord change, I can just sort of think of playing these, sorry, G and then to the D, these neighboring stacks of triads. And it seems like, well, I mean, I, I know that full bar chord, what's the difference? It's really just about how you put the intention into that phrase. So now here, if I sort of start playing these triads a little more as if they're like pieces of a melody. So if I did like, bridges that gap between uh, like soloing and little fills and things like that. And so the more that you're able to um, mix in your right hand technique, so you're not always just playing it one particular way, you're kind of putting in some personality. So if I decide to spell it out, it suddenly sounds very lyrical, right? stabs are really nice and kind of rhythmic obviously the verb is helping it, the reverb so that's a little bit of the obsession with triads is that they can just instantly bring more color and it's not like a shortcut or a cheat code it's a little more like oh it was right there all along I maybe don't have to go hunting for a million different notes I can stay where I am and get a little bit more flavor out of it so let's try this. We're going to stay right here and on your side of the screen, just think we've got G, C, G, D. Very simple progression. You don't need to have it tabbed out in front of you or anything. I'll put on this sort of scene switcher. And I just want you to stay down here in this third fret area and find the, the nearest triads. And just to overview the, the three different bar chord shapes that we're taking the triads from. This first one, this G, is based out of this full sort of six string uh, shape. This one, that C, is coming from that fifth string shape, back to the G. 
and then this D is coming from that shape. So those are the only three shapes, right? For the major, right? Back to the G, and then to the D. And I'm just playing different variations. So when you're rocking out with me, never feel like you're tied to just one version of like, oh, he's, he's playing it exactly like this. He changed. It's because I have a sort of squirrel brain. And I kind of want you, I guess, also to express whatever instincts you have. But to be able to act on those instincts, you got to sort of test out your possibilities. So that's why I'm all about like, well, maybe you do a little bit of this and you do a little bit of that. But the underlying idea here is that we've got this set of kind of parameters, right? So we'll stay here a little bit longer. C. Back to G. Down to D. Now let's see if we can take this exact same game and now we're gonna go to a different position here. So okay, like what's my anchor? I might find my anchor with, with this G right here. And then from there I'm like, oh, okay, I can build a, that little sort of D looking shape to get that G. And then from there, I can sort of like find my other neighboring C and D chords. So it's good to take like a little bit of inventory to be okay, where's my nearest choices? And then throw those into the mix on the fly. So we've got this G and then the C right above it. Back to that first G. Now this D is kind of down here. Repeat to the C, back down to the G. You can go up to this D. Once you get these options kind of squared away, you don't have to do a lot of math to go grab for them. They're just kind of, they're there because you've tested how, how far you have to go to find them. You get the idea. We'll do this a little bit more here in the same spot. G, C, to G. And I'm adding in these little fills and you're welcome to do that too. That is part of the fun that if, if you know where there's some little additional suspensions and things like that, go for it. If you're not familiar with that yet, don't worry about it. The triads sound great as they are. Let's go up now to this one now. So this is based off of this G. And then we go to the C. We could go here, right there, G and then down to the D. In fact, I'll keep it on that slide there for a bit. You see how if you look at it and you just sort of start to relax your eyes and see the pattern, there's literally like, there's really only three shapes and the only reason that it turns into six shapes is because we're splitting them across two sets of strings, right? And so as we've moved up to these different areas of the neck, they're, the C, the G, and the D, they're just swapping places, meaning like if if the G down here is this one that on the third fret that looks like a piece of that bar chord, it means that the nearest C isn't gonna use that same shape, right? It's just how it's gonna work out in terms of the pitches. So it's kind of like, well, if the G looks like this shape, this first one up here, then the C is gonna look like it's based off of that. And then the D is gonna be the other option. So that sort of helps you kind of like by process of elimination know that, oh, they're all trading places. Back down to the G. Now I'm on that second position. So that's the vibe there, right? The noodling happens, and what's good about that is that if you have things you're familiar with that are not triads, it's really fun to focus for a little bit just on the exercise, and then when you go back to playing a little bit of soloing or fills in between, it has much more kind of like intention behind it. So even as I'm saying, oh, let's focus on this and do the triathlon, it's really good to give yourself meaningful little breaks, just like breaks between sets, okay? So if I was going like just all about the triads, just 
just focusing on those shapes. And now I tell myself, all right, I'll just play some stuff I know. And then switch back into the triads. So it's like a game of alternating, right? And it gets very musical sounding, right? Just triads. Something kind of slick and then back to the basic exercise. That's a vibe there, folks. That's a vibe as we say here in Guitar Friend Tim Universe. Okay, we're gonna add another layer of spice here. We're gonna switch into sideways. So um, if right there, previously we were doing stacked, event number two of the triathlon is sideways. So we're gonna be going up and down the neck. I just call it sideways because sometimes I get confused. Like when you say lateral or vertical or horizontal, you know, it's that whole which way is up. Is it the ceiling or is it? Anyway, uh, for general navigation of the neck, just so you know, this way is up. That's what it should be. If someone's teaching you that that's down the neck, then then they're going to confuse you down the line because up and register, up and pitch and up the neck is that way and down the neck is that way. So we're going up and down the neck and we're going sideways. So we've already kind of covered a bit of that. This G shape here to take it up the neck goes like that. And so once you've done those three triad shapes, you've done all three combinations for that, for the major shape. We haven't gotten into the minor yet, but for each of those, for the major and for the minor, there's really only three combinations and that's just like root three, five, and then you change the stacking order of those. And by the way, we're, we're just talking today in general just about triads that are voiced all together, like side by side. So there's versions of, you know, triads that are spaced out and things like that. But, but to get these pieces here together that we're doing is really useful. And then you can kind of branch out into other things where you're kind of playing with the variations. But three various versions of triads. Look at this chart right here that we had up there, and that'll help you kind of see that so we've got this g we'll do the same progression now we'll do the g c and d and now the game the event is that you've got to make a movement that goes sideways so if there's a g chord i want to try to split that into two triads and then the choice is up to me do i move up or do i move down this is where you got to be able to see your options so i might go sideways g to g and then i might go to the nearby c and then down to so that lateral movement, that sideways movement is going to give you way more flexibility so we don't get that kind of, you know, that fear of making the next jump. You got to keep crossing that, crossing that threshold and jumping in the, the cool water. So I'll keep it on this screen right here. Um, we're in the lovely key of G major. G, C, G, D. So here comes around again. We'll start down here. We got G. We'll go up to this one. We'll go up to the C back down here, repeat, and then down to the D, just keep playing that game, so this is just the top three strings, and then you can go up again, you can do whichever direction you want, don't worry if you're doing different choices than me, that's the idea, as long as we're hitting the same chords, it'll actually sound cooler. So just the top three strings. You could even skip a triad in between if you're feeling frisky. And then, like I said before, try to mix up your right hand technique. strings two, three, and four. So one string group lower. <laughs> I can't help but play with the Bigs B. It's such a cool tremolo because it's nice and subtle. And anyway, let's get back on track. No playing around, it's guitar. Is the idea 
idea. And you might be saying, well, what about the other keys? Well, by all means, knock yourself out. I'm ready to play in a new key myself. Um, and one good way that you can sort of take this and extrapolate with it, uh, the PDF that I think I have the free link to it down below in the description. Click on that and it basically takes everything I'm doing, but it summarizes it all into one cheat sheet, which is really good because you get the same chart um, that I had up there with, with the different shapes of the triads. You get the major and minor and then these three events so that you can then take it to a different jam track. So you can grab any one of the jam tracks you know that, that you've got or, or play along with a song that you know the chord changes to and then just apply these same principles where it's like, okay, these chord changes that goes like, you know, major, minor, blah, 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 it's in the key of A, whatever your given song is, and then take these same ideas. You might be at a faster or slower tempo. But that's the idea. That's how, really how I structure a lot of my lessons where it's more about like, Here's a bit of a musical context that's fun. And then the beauty of guitar is that you can take the shape and run with it. And yes, we'll get to the, it, a lot of times people worry like, oh, but if I only know the shape, I won't, uh, you'll, you'll know a lot more than you think. If you can work with the anchor, which is like the root note usually to find your place. And then you can find the shape. You'll get a sense of like how the scales and the chords start to overlap and touch each other. And that is what we're doing here today is like, we're making sure we don't get stuck on one little island on the neck as long as we have some way that we can like sort of take a bridge over to the next one, that's really more how I feel you can unlock the fretboard as opposed to sometimes people think I'm going to memorize every note of the fretboard as if I'm going to like memorize every single possible, you know, note on the, on the keyboard. And that's only so useful because the moment that a song starts, it's like, Oh, how and when and where do I use it? Whereas with this, you just bite it off a piece at a time. And before you know it, you've got like a pretty good understanding of a large part of the neck. And yes, you will have areas where you spend more time, but have you ever seen the fretboard of someone that especially has like a, a maple fretboard where they spend most of the time? You can literally see where the finger grease is. It's like a lot of action down here. And then it kind of goes up this top part of the neck as they do these higher voicings. So you might not turn out, it might not turn out that you need every single note all the time, but if you have areas that you're like locked and loaded, it's a very hireable, jammable sort of, can play well with others quality in a guitar player in my personal opinion last event we put them together into what i'm just going to call the l-shaped combo this is like the uh the tetris piece you know the one that is like the l shape and that's just what comes to mind when it's like you do one step going stacked and then one step sideways so you draw this sort of l shape it's really just putting the last two pieces together and now we've got this maximum flexibility, right? Oh, this is a different chord change. So, so this progression now is the classic one, five, six, four. So from the top here, it's one, which is G. The five chord is D. Now we go to our first minor chord of the day, E minor, down to C. And like I joke about, this is like the four chords that Ed Sheeran claims you can basically make any pop song out of, which he's right. He's just right. The man and his millions are right. All right, so let's see what that looks like for us. So we've got, that would be an L shape right there. Then I go sideways. I keep going to the C. Then I go to the E minor. Now the C. So here's a G. I go to the stacked version of it. Then I'll do a D down to a sideways. I'll do an E, I'll do a stack, and then a C. Just mix it up. It's really kind of a nice way to test your fluency with it. So jam out on that for a bit. I will, uh, believe it or not, shut up for a bit. One, four, sorry, one, five, six, four, G, D, E minor, C. Here we go.
I promise you guys, that 90s chord. The most 90s chord that I can think of. But I will turn my attention now to the chat. See, it's good to just lose yourself in the, in the sauce. Hopefully you were jamming and doing your thing, doing a little bit of the homework, eating the vegetables as it were. And whenever I move out of the shot, that's how you know I'm just feeling it. Uh, my doggies are back there. You can't see them, but I think next stream I'll make sure that I have the, the, the doggy cam back there on them. They're pretty great. Um, but let's look at this magical 90s chord. We got to do a, a triumphant ending here. Here we go. All righty, all righty, all righty, Aphrodite. Um, in my opinion. Tell me this. Close your eyes. Imagine, I don't know, it's 1998. Maybe for you, that means you're not a thing yet. You're in the womb. Maybe you're working as a lifeguard. Speaking from experience. Children of the future, combine your energies. Raise a glass, raise your voice to the eternal histories. I mean, just right there. That's all I'm saying. And what's fun about it, other than whatever that was, I don't know, I was in a trance. It's just a bar chord where you lift off the bar of the top two strings. And, you know, naming it, I guess, whatever, it's sort of a F sharp major with these, you know, extensions, nines and twos or whatever. It's similar to like the, I think the close second, you might disagree. That's kind of like, that's very, it's almost the 80s one. That's sort of like, can't do a Tim Pierce. Tim Pierce can do a Tim Pierce. By the way, I think he's streaming now or in a little bit. You probably know that though, if you're a guitar enthusiast. Um, I'm going to ask you in the chat now. I know there's a long delay and is you know, we'll see who's there, but if, is there any chord that you love that you think sort of brings a mystical quality, a 90s or an 80s or a particularly dreaminess? Yeah, Mraz for sure. I'm just seeing, I don't know when you made that comment. And I've sort of been in my own world, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you gathered from my bio or whatever. Um, I used to tour with Colby Calais. That back there is a, a platinum record from, I played on her first record and then toured with her for the whole first album, which was about a year and a half. And I was the band leader, which was a great experience. Cause like I went from just sort of being a singer songwriter and a friend of Colby's to all of a sudden she had this enormous gig her very first shows were like opening for Goo Goo Dolls and Lifehouse. And we were doing this huge tour. And suddenly the the rigors of playing every day for not only the audience, like for the show, but also all these radio performances. So she had to do, that's one of my dogs, Lolly, screeching and scratching now. She had to do all these sort of 8 a.m. like show up at a radio station and play an acoustic version of her hit song. And I would go there with her and be the guitarist. And so very quickly we had to put together ar arrangements and like sort of stripped down versions of it. Anyway, long story short, it led to um, us figuring out like all these different ways of doing the songs. And I was sort of her, uh, her wingman in all those situations. And then one day we got an email from Jason Mraz saying, Hey Colby, like, you know, welcome to, you know, music basically like out of thin air. And she had been doing so well on the pop charts. Everyone was starting to hear about her. And he's like, I want to do a song with you. Are you, are you up for that? And she said, yes. And she, uh, invited me to help work on the song. Cause again, she knew me first and foremost as like a fellow songwriter in the LA scene. So I was like, heck yeah. And we had no idea how the song would go, but, it, um, Long story short, again, it turned into that duet that they sing, Lucky, that was the follow-up single on his enormous record. So Lucky Me, it was like his first single was I'm Yours, and then the next one was Lucky. And yeah, it's just a charming little song that went on to like see this enormous life of its own. And you just never know. You never know, gang. So you keep on playing those triads. The 80s. Wade, your vintage, your classic takes one to know one stay true to the good sounds the 80s the 90s i approve um sometimes when i do this sort of like vibrato thing i don't know how to play that intro to better call saul but that's something like that 
See, that's the power of these, these triads. Where I'm trying to get you with it is that once you got the underlying meat, meat and potatoes of these notes and all that stuff, that kind of, it's tasty, but after a while it starts to get kind of samey. Then you combine that with these little suspensions and the things, even the stuff, the trippy stuff where you get these nines and, you know, these fun guitar sounding things where you get a, a C chord, you slide it up two frets. It just creates that sort of open sound where there's notes that are a little bit closer together than they normally would be in a standard stacking of a major chord. So you get these little flavors that are right next door. So if I get this D, for example, I can do these. That's one of my favorite little kind of shapes. Anytime I'm doing that, you heard me maybe doing that when I was noodling, is like up in this uh, G where it looks like that D shape. I love this. So those are just kind of go-to things that I like to grab as like a little step away from the underlying triad. But it could be confusing if I didn't have that foundation of like, okay, here's my triad, like that's home base. It's a little bit like, that's the thing that I'm doing a little twist on versus if I tried to do a twist on everything, I'd just be, you know, dizzy. Any questions? Any questions coming from the chat before we wrap this up? Um, I appreciate y'all stopping by. It's a big Black Friday blowout kind of season. Have you guys been experiencing any like crazy good sales? Let me know. Are there any like, I know, like when it comes to gear and stuff, sometimes I really dive in. This year, I'm kind of like agnostic. I'm just sort of like, weirdly, I'm pretty well satiated. I say that. I probably just cursed myself. But like, I know JHS pedals, they're great. They're sold out of the clons. I got to ask my friend Galen if, if he's in the chat still. Galen, did you get there in time to get the not a clon kit? Uh, they make this incredible, it's such a smart idea. The Klon, as you may know, is like a super sought after overdrive pedal. That, I don't know the whole story of it, but basically it turned into this like absolutely um, marked up just by the sheer demand of it in the sort of second secondary market. So in other words, all the eBay prices went through the roof, like absurd. Like there's some that are like a couple hundred thousand dollars, which makes no sense. It's a pedal. It's still just a pedal, just like it's just a guitar. Um, but in response to that, the guy, um, was it Josh, JHS, those are his initials. They do such a good job with their content and their shows and their pedals are great. I love their, their stuff. I'm using a couple of them right now on my board. Um, but they created the build your own, essentially like a spoof on the Ikea type of thing. But it's all this incredible you know, circuitry where you can build it without using a soldering iron and put together your own clon. Because the absurdity had gotten so out of hand you know, for buying the actual clons. And, and Josh, the guy who runs it, is such an avid pedal, you know, like deep, deep ultimate fan that he knows that it's not, you know, that elusive. You can recreate it. And so they sold out like immediately, like the first 3,000 of these kits because I think the added factor of people building their own is just too fun to pass up. So I got to get one of those at some point, get on the waiting list. Anne says, do people use triads on four, five, and six much? They do. And that's kind of like, I, I kind of, w without saying too much about it, I sort of like am leaving that for maybe another lesson, but they can be very useful and tasty. And so, for example, if we take the same G, strings one, two, three, two, three, four, in the bar chord is that strings, uh, what would it be like? I don't, I don't usually do these numberings, but it's the next group down. It'd be like three, four, five. And then if you go down again, it's it's not the exact bar chord because the, the low three strings of a bar chord, there's a repeated note. You got the octave. So to get that, they sound really nice and lush. But since they're kind of a different sounding animal, uh, rather than thinking they're all the same, not that you're, you're thinking that, but um, it's kind of like a different use case where I would say like... really cool and mellow and they don't have to be mellow but they they kind of live in the register where they might be more rhythmic or sort of like overlapping with the bass you might not have another guitar playing that so they they kind of do their own thing but they're they're beautiful and just like up here there's just three shapes it's good to get for every um, group of three strings the corresponding three shapes so here those are the three shapes on strings one, two, three. Here, those are the three shapes for strings two, three, and four. 
here. Let's see how I can do this. Uh, so that's the next group down, and then down here, the low three strings of the open G. And they're just really nice. The person who actually might know more about these at the moment is, again, my friend Galen. He's taken the bass course from Scott's Bass Lessons about fretboard accelerator. And bass players know this stuff before guitar players come around to it usually because they have to be like, they're arpeggiating it, they're spelling it out, but they're getting these exact... playing bass I won't bore you with me playing bass but whenever I make the jam tracks part of what I look forward to the most is playing a little bit of bass because it's just bass is one of those deceptive things it's humbling and satisfying because you got to have the, the rhythm and the groove locked in that's what I'm doing I'm just out here on a Saturday I'm calling it super sweet Saturday I meant to send a Black Friday uh, email blast out yesterday but I didn't quite have my ducks in a row to send out exactly what I wanted to in terms of like something that would make sense. So I sent it out today and it was like the uh, super sweet Saturday deal. Uh, and there is a great deal going on now for the membership to the Guitar Friend Tim uh, community, which as I was saying earlier is on the Mighty Networks platform. It'll be, everything will be branded, you know, Guitar Friend Tim, but this service that creates this really good hub for having community and chat and the courses and uh, we can do the live streams and everything and Zoom hangs all from within there. You can have notifications. You can turn the notifications off. You can message, blah, blah, blah. It's like what I'm saying. It's almost like having our own private mini Instagram, except without the invasive cat videos and mud water ads or whatever. Um, so I'm really excited that that's kind of the hub because I, as much as anything, I want people that are practicing and studying guitar on their own to feel inspired by each other. Cause I think that's the missing piece where we can, even if you're really diligent and you're like, I'm going to learn this course and I'm going to like follow every step and finish the whole uh, journey of it. That is great. That missing piece to me is like, it doesn't have to necessarily be going out and playing gigs. Cause that's not what everyone's goals are. But when you dare to share and sort of jump in the cold water of like, I'm hitting record or I'm hitting upload for a video of yourself playing. And you just open yourself up to the fact that everyone's trying and doing their best. And like, I think we're all sort of at a point now where being positive is really cool again <laughs> on the internet. And so the fear of being, you know, like blasted in the comments is so much in the past, especially in this community. And I won't frankly tolerate anyone being anything other than like, you know, positive reinforcement. And if there's any sort of tips, it's all in the, in the yes and kind of mindset. So thrilled that that's coming together now and we're running a big sale it's like 30 percent off for the annual and you can get that free pdf for the triathlon steps a lot of fun to be had there and i hope you have a really fun rest of your weekend if it's a holiday weekend for you if you're an american you're still digesting the gravy and you got a lot of leftovers work to do so uh good luck with that i haven't been watching the football game but i am a university of michigan alum but i did i see that galen said go blue i hope that means that when i check the score it's a good update uh, and with that, I'll just take us out with some jamming and noodling. You know what? Let's speed it up a little bit. Let's pep it up just a bit. We've, we've, we can take the training wheels off. We'll crank this from 70 up to 80. And you know what? We've been, we've been hanging out so much in the key of G. I'm just going to be an absolute maniac here and see if I can transpose this in Ableton. Is this the worst idea I've ever had? Let's, uh, let's move this up to... Oh, I don't know. Let's let's move it up from G to A. We'll move it up to B. And then we'll move these. This is an absolute train wreck in the making. <laughs> I'll make sure I go back and like delete this part of the video. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. What's this? No. There we are. Oh, folks. Look at that. That's so uplifting. Even the crackling of my cord falling out isn't gonna throw us off. Oh no, Anne's a Spartan. I love it. Oh, Sparty, Sparty, can't you see? It's okay. You never know what you're gonna trip over. In fact, I noticed one of my members in their, in their email address, it's OSU. I'm like, oh, how are we gonna bring it up at some point? It's okay. I have a lot of good people. In fact, 
basically my whole family is from Okemos and East Lansing. So we might have to talk at another time and, and figure out who we know we know. Anyway. It's all about guitar today, folks. It's all about the love. So I guess we're in C. We're not in B. That's great. <laughs> uh... Oh yeah, and this is very much the I'm Yours progression. Case in point, hit song, eh? Full circle, baby. Take care, everybody. Y'all be good to yourselves. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Cha 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 cha. Good job, great work, and that guy needs a haircut. It's all good. Woo!